Let's uh, broaden our focus again, what we're seeing in markets at the moment. To do that, we are joined by Peter Maguire from XM. Pete, a very good Monday morning to you. Always a good rate to start the week with you. So let's overall see market performance, what's winning, what's losing at the moment. Well, good morning, Andrew. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a big week last week when you're looking at the performance as far as US equities. China was sold off heavily, but the overall theme has been bullishness. And uh, we've just got to see, and as the chart tells the story there, crude was certainly smashed to the downside. It really hemorrhaged, uh, had a really strong run up you know, over the last you know, couple of weeks, and then it was sold off aggressively. Gold's back at, you know, that it's fairly strong when you're looking at the numbers, you know, nearly 2670. Uh, US dollars gaining some strength, Andrew. It's nearly at 103, and everything else is pretty much cratering. Euros under pressure. Uh, yen's back at 149, nearly nudging the door at 150. And uh, dollar index, as I mentioned, you know, 103, just under 103. So it's, uh, yeah, going to be a big week ahead, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, quite a bit to look at. Uh, we'll get to gold in just a moment. You're looking at the outperformance of that. Um, what uh, what are you seeing, I guess, particularly data out of the, the States at the moment? Would you have retail sales coming to us? Yep. Would well, we've got manufacturing. Yes, exactly right. You've got manufacturing. That'll be released today. The New York Fed. You've got Thursday uh, by Philadelphia Fed President um, uh, Pat Harker. So that'll be interesting to just to pull that apart. Industrial production numbers also on Thursday. It's not a big week as far as data drops, but there, I think once you see those sort of numbers, Andrew, as far as retail sales, if they're stronger than expected, then that's going to put, I think, a handbrake as far as, you know, a 50 basis point cut. And it'll be nudging 25 even. You've got some analysts saying you don't deserve a cut at all. So mm. this is the dilemma that we're facing. There's, again, three scenarios playing out. Yes for 50, yes for 25 or zero. So uh, we've just got to strap ourselves in. It isn't far away as far as the 7th of November for a decision. Yeah, because the, the focus now on the state's less on inflation because that seems to be under control at the moment. And it is on obviously retail, but, but also jobs. What are we seeing there just as far as US unemployment is concerned? Well, I mean, when you if you're thinking of, you know, you saw those numbers drop over the weekend, Boeing slashing 17,000 jobs, many big corporates are starting to, you know, savagely hit headcount. Um, you've got some sectors of the of the uh, of the job market. Certainly, government is employing, you know, very very strong numbers. But overall, across you know uh, Wall Street, it's going to be again an interesting factor looking into this fourth quarter whether you're going to see savage, you know, pullbacks as far as um, employment. So we've just got a, it's a wait and see approach and the numbers won't lie. And you're just looking at what the CFOs are prepared to do to, you know, meet expectation from, an, you know, naturally to the analysts and, of course, to share price. How's this all translating just as far as what we're seeing in treasuries at the moment, those yields? Yeah, well, they're, you know, a bit mixed at the moment. I'm looking at the two year and the 10 year. They seem to be softening a bit. And uh, that's the situation at the moment. But I think, again, you're going to see probably volatility across that whole um, complex because of the uncertainty leading into the end of the year, Andrew. Is, it, is there going to be a rate cut? Is there not? And then the, I suppose, the, the, the widening of the of the rate cuts in the set, well, where you're looking at the eurozone, what's happening there from rate cuts perspective? What's happening in other you know mature markets like New Zealand? Are you going to see 75 basis points as their next cut? So these are all factors that are going to influence again yield curves and you know the the Fed policy and naturally you know bonds. Well, you mentioned the eurozone. What what are you seeing there at the moment, Pete? <sighs> Well, I made some notes, Andrew. I mean, you know, you, there's a big chance that um, you've got a rate cut. It's expected on Thursday. And is it going to be 50 or could it actually be larger? Um, this is the issue that we're going to face. But I don't think it's going to be naturally larger. But I feel as though it will be back to back. And uh, that'll be the, the size of that cut. Um, you know, you've got the inflation story, headline inflation below 2%, disappointing PMIs and expecting, you know, 25 on Thursday and another cut in December. Um, so that seems to be the, the general consensus at the moment. You know, it'll be back to back. In the, there's no meeting in November, so it'll be October and December as far as cuts. Meanwhile, across the channel, the UK uh, looking back in a positive growth, at least, for the economy. 
Yeah, it is, Andrew. Um, that's a good sign. But, uh, you know, you've still got the, you know, the uh, I'm looking at the swaps market, the overnight index swaps. Investors are assigning a strong 75% chance of a 25 basis point on. Uh, that's a cut on November 7. And the probability of another, um, that's running at about 60%, probability of another cut in December. So that seems to be the, the theme at the moment. Two cuts, November and December for the POMs. And that'll be a little bit of a respite for Christmas shopping. Mm, indeed. And Peter, of course, China very much in focus at the moment, given the stimulus we're seeing out of there. At another press conference on Saturday, seemed a bit, little disappointing as far as the market's concerned. Once again, high expectations about uh, further stimulus. I think there's another press conference today, in fact. I think there is, Andrew. You know, when you're looking at the market, I mean, if you first off, let's examine the stock market over September. It was just astounding, just, you know, mind-blowing growth. But it was very heavily sold off from that 41.50 sort of number on the CSI 300 back under 3,900. So it's had a, a, about 7% wipeout last week. Very solid, you know, push down. So that's going to be interesting how, the, how this week plays out and whether the market... Are they going to look for another boost of stimulus, get the bazooka out, or how the numbers are, I suppose, examined, and then the impact that's going to have naturally to domestic consumption and their own retail sales and, of course, their stock market. So, yeah, plenty of volatility for the Chinese traders, and uh, I think this week won't disappoint either. Pete, let's uh, let's go back to where we started, uh, particularly you mentioned there of gold, how it has outperformed. What, what are you seeing there at the moment then? Well, Andrew, I mean, you can't, you know, the numbers are just mind blowing, you know, 14% up from the third quarter, 42% year on year. It stripped that, you know, it, it, I mean, the S&P 500 was outstanding at 32% for the year annual return, but gold's 42%. So it's just onward and upward. If that US dollar does see a rate cut in, in November, I think that's going to push further upside as far as gold. And uh, one can't argue with the performance. It's just you know, extraordinary. So, um, yeah, I think its best days are probably still ahead of it. And who knows what it can do by the end of year. You've got two and a half months to run. You've got uh, geopolitical concerns. You've got interest rate policy. You've got an election. So there's plenty of, and of course, the threat of war. So all of this is, I think, going to add value and, and investor confidence to the gold market. What about digital gold? What are you seeing there in terms of Bitcoin, Pete? Well, it's not bad, Andrew. I mean, it's still 62, 63,000. I've got it's just under it's 62,900 approximately. It's been a strong year. You can't argue with the numbers, and I think it's probably going to again have another leg up. But we've just got to see, you know, timeline perspective. It's choppy. It's volatile. Day traders are loving it because of opportunity. But uh, yeah, the overall theme: if you're a hold and you know put it in the bottom drawer, and I think again, you know, bitcoins you can't be without it. You know, you know. Have a look at the chart. I mean, you know, the chart tells you everything. It's just incredible what you've seen in the last year and a half. Mind blowing. 